Welcome to the abridged version of uh, Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I am Nolin Abel Ame. A while ago, we brought to you the footage of um, President addressing the 344 students that were kidnapped on 11th of December 2020, who were freed yesterday, 17th of December, and uh, they have been brought to the government house for the president to address them and the next line of action. Now, it is good news uh, for the all the 344 abducted students of government science secondary school Kankara, uh, even though we have already brought you the update on the situation, uh, but this was uh, packaged by uh, Salwa Khalil Ibrahim. President Muhammadu Buhari is reassuring the nation that his administration will not leave anything to chance until all Nigerians still in captivity in parts of the country regained freedom and reunited with their families, while the Boko Haram insurgency and other acts of criminality brought to a halt. The president stated this while speaking to NTA State House correspondent Adamu Sambu shortly after the release of the abducted students of Government Science Secondary School, Kankara, in Katsuna State. We thank God that um, the law enforcement agencies, in this case, especially the military, the army, and the governor uh, worked extremely hard and uh, as soon as uh, they got them, the governor rang me and informed me. And I congratulated him and the army uh, that organized the operation and so on. How do you personally feel about this development? The military is well trained. I think they are sufficiently motivated. Uh, the governor, I'm very impressed with, with, with the governor. Uh, he has been, uh, uh, you know, up and doing since it happened. And uh, I congratulated him that the children have been uh, successfully recovered. There are many Nigerians still in captivity across the country. Is there any hope that they will soon be released? Well, we are doing our best. Um, remember when we closed the borders? Um, we found out that uh, still, somehow, the, the terrorists or the abductors still get weapons and ammunition. They still take people hostages. They are collecting millions of naira. We have a lot of work ahead of us, and some of the things we may not say. We don't. I don't want to compromise the security and the efforts being put by the law enforcement agencies. But really, we are acutely aware of our responsibilities. Our responsibility is to secure the country. So we have a lot of work to do. What message do you have to the armed forces and other security services in the country in view of the recurring incidents of kidnapping and other acts of terrorism in parts of the country? Well, armed forces know their job. I, I meet them. We have security meetings from time to time. I'm very, they, they must be very clear of my instructions. 
their efforts is not good enough for me. Um, our responsibility, as I said, is to secure this country for all the students to do their businesses without uh, any problem. We haven't achieved that yet, but we'll keep on trying. What can you assure Nigerians going forward as you continue to execute your mandate? I will continue to be loyal to this country. Um, I have asked for this mandate. I got it. I must not advance any excuse for failing to perform. But the instance was a correspondent at the most sample there with the president on the issue of the abducted and uh, released 344 students. We now take you back to Katsina where the president is addressing the students and uh, also um, what next line of action will be uh, when the president finish addressing these students and at uh, the government house Katsina. So we are taking you back there now. We are sorry for the glitches there. We cannot continue. When it stabilizes, we'll come back to Kasuna, where the president is addressing the students. Now, the president of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, said he is relieved at the news of the release of the hundreds of schoolboys kidnapped last week Friday at the Government Science Secondary School, Kankara, in Katsuna State. In a statement by the special advisor to the president of the Senate on media, and public affairs, Ola Aoni, Senator Lowen said, this news will delight their parents and all the people of goodwill in Nigeria and across the world who have been horrified by the ordeal of the innocent children. He described the recent incident as enough warning for Nigeria to deploy all the resources required for the security of all citizens and the nation's educational institutions. Senator Lawan applauded the prompt intervention and productive engagement of President Muhammadu Buhari Governor Aminu Masari of Katsina State and security agencies for their coordinated effort. All right, I'm told that the network has stabilized now. We are taking you back to Katsina for the program. <laughs> Alhamdulillahi <laughs> Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Kinder 
Tengo que tirar ni se me Ni. Muchas no me he hecho. O si me la vas a decir, me la Pero hay que decir. Si la voy a ver al precio a la sitio, si hay una nueva, si la posición a la audiencia. Bueno, había el video. Yo la he hecho que se quedara sobre el chapo. Si quieres saber que te puedo tener un año, me queda ya cara, porque aquí no puedo tener una análisis. Y luego si quieres tener una, me se queda un poco ahí. Me se queda que hay algo de sol y me se queda que hay algo de sol. Me queda un poco ahí, me queda un poco ahí, me queda un poco ahí. Well, we apologize again for the poor signal over there, and uh, we'll be connecting thereafter. The Northern Governors Forum has welcomed with excitement the release of the abducted students of Government Science Secondary School, uh, Katsuna State Chairman of the Forum and Governor of Plateau State, Simon Bakola Long, while reacting to the development, commended President Muhammadu Buhari, Governor Aminu Bello Masari, security agencies, community leaders, and all stakeholders who contributed in making sure the school boys were released unharmed. He said the release of the students will comfort and usurge the parents and the entire country, which has been agonized since the children were kidnapped. Lalong said with the release of the students, further measures must be put in place to ensure that this ugly incident does not occur again, while thorough investigation should also be carried out to ensure that those behind this condemnable act are made to face justice. Meanwhile, the forum has also reacted uh, to a statement ascribed to the APC Acting Deputy National Publicity Secretary, Yekini Nabina, alleging that intelligence reports link a governor in one of the northwestern states to rising cases of banditry, abductions, and other violent crimes in the zone. The forum urges security agencies to conduct a full-scale investigation of the allegations as it maintains that the forum has no tolerance for such conduct from any of its members. The forum says it has been working in unity and uh, in conjunction with the federal government and the security agencies to bring to an end all forms of insecurity and criminal activities in the region and the nation as a whole. The federal government has uh, called on those who are desperate in politicizing the nation's security situation to desist from doing so in the interests of the country. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed said of this at a media briefing in Abuja. Anthony Fawson reports. The briefing is coming on the heels of the rescue of the 344 government science secondary school Kankara students. Lai Mohammed expressed displeasure over the manner in which some commentaries were put out to politicize the matter. Some Nigerians went as far as denigrating their government and country in the most uncouth and irresponsible manner. They simply threw decorum to the wind and allowed their emotions to take a better part of them. When disasters and tragedies strike, people come together. We hope the naysayers have learned their lessons. And we hope those who have started trading and politicking with the hashtag, bring back our boys, cannot go home as our boys have been brought back. 
The minister said, as a responsive government, it has always accepted responsibility rather than remain in self-denial, a situation that has always made the difference in any abduction, and therefore the federal government, he maintained, will not relent until all those who are still in captivity in Chibok and Dapchi are rescued and reunited with their parents. The minister said, government will not condone a situation where children go to school with fear, as it is putting in place necessary measures to secure all schools and Nigerians alike. Noting that school insecurity is not synonymous to Nigeria alone, and so the release of the schoolboys is a testament to the importance the present administration attaches to security and safety of the citizens. Let me state here that the administration of President Mohamed Buhari will continue to do everything possible to prevent the recurrence of these school abductions. I will also make bold to say that we have moved with speed and determination each time we have faced the challenges of school abductions. And the results attest to this. Responding to questions from journalists who sought to know the terms in which the boys were released, Lai Mohamed quickly cleared the air. The last leg of your question says that you believe that money changed hands. Money did not change hands. He also debunked the involvement of Boko Haram, saying they were merely trying to seek relevance. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. Meanwhile, uh, let's now hear from Abdullahi Mahdi Kankara, uh, a guardian of one of the rescued students. And uh, let's hear from their, their parents. Just, uh, when I hear the news or the story, I'm very, very happy to hear the release of this abducted government science secondary student uh, students. Majority of these students are our junior brothers. So since from the kidnapping of these students, uh, we are in critical condition in the town. It's the majority of the parents and we the guardians. We meet together to pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring an end to this kind of banditry in the town and in the state and in the nation all over. But all praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making things possible with the, with the possible assistance from the executive governor of Katana State and for him to stand behind the parents and see that the abducted students were released. Now that the students are more or less with us because they are now with the executive governor and we are quite sure whatever is with the executive governor mm. is within our reach. Yes. Now let's talk more on measures on how to secure learning institutions across Nigeria. And uh, to do this is uh, Mr. Habila Joshak, retired Deputy Inspector General of Police. Sir, so you're welcome. Thank to you Nationwide. for having me. All right, with this development now, and of course, we just watched the president addressing these students that were abducted and released yesterday. So, what's the next line of action from your perspective? Uh, from what, what, what have been learned uh, here and what um, Mr. President have said, it does appear as if um, insecurity has been taken up again to the front burner and um, you could see the commitment or the pronouncement of Mr. President, you know, um, charging all security agencies uh, to double up the uh, uh, effort and, and to, and to uh, try as much as possible to do something urgently and different from what um, it's happening and that the government are ready, you know, to come after all those uh, criminals uh, element either in any part of this country, not just the Northwest or Northeast or North Central. Um, he's going to go all hall and he has charged the security apparatus of this country and their leaders to ensure that all of this must be put to an end. All right, do you think 
government can do something differently from what they have done now in the aspect of securing students in, in this kind of situation? Yeah, I believe in this country, I believe in, 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 in the security agencies, the, the military. Uh, there are a lot of things, of course, that has to be brought back to the, to the table. Okay. And then, um, like I said, the component of the communities, wherever um, these things are identified, must be very, very important. Planning without the communities, planning without those of them in the communities that can be very useful, will not be able to give us the kind of intelligence or information that we can convert into intelligence and act upon. Uh, you could see that... Um, the, the incident of, of Kankara uh, a week ago, you, you, you'll be surprised that um, uh, the people came in on a lot of motorcycle, very noisy, uh, into a, a school, although isolated, and uh, were able to pick this kind of boys and make their way into the forest, the Ruku forest, which is more thicker in Zamfara. Uh, you could see that um, the, the failure of, of, of that um, intelligence of course, it's the community, and it is not possible to apportion blame to those communities because I'm sure they've not been brought together and be made to be part and parcel of the planning uh, stage of, of, of this operation, that is um, incorporating them at the initial stage, even when there were no incorporating incidents. Incorporating the community. Yes. You must plant the community. You must let the community know that they have a, they have a role to play and that they have also, the, they must cultivate the ability to be able to protect themselves and to know who in that community is, um, is, has some criminal tendency and which forest do we have criminals hibernating there because these criminals used to move out in search of food and some other things. Also, that, that goes to say the community has a huge role to play. Very, very huge role. Very, very huge role. There are a lot of ungoverned um, space in, 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 in the country. And um, the forestry area that we said um, that span through Kaduna, Niger, and then into uh, Zamfara, uh, Katsina, and into uh, 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 um, Sokoto is, is, is quite huge, to, up to, to Kano. So the information coming from them is very important. Now, uh, what do you have to say with the happenings as the president is receiving the abducted, uh, kidnapped uh, students today? Well, I, I think it means that uh, Mr. President has um, a lot of concern and a conviction uh, that this, I, this incident that happened um, is touchy uh, for him to personally come in there and, and make some statement is a warning and a call to the security agencies and the military that something very special and very different from what has been happening must happen. All right. Can you talk to us on the area surveillance uh, when it comes to the aspect of security forces here? Yeah, we've, 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 we've dealt with that. You know, um, before the military could operate, mm. there's the need for the intelligent group and, 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 and the DSS, the state security services, are based at that. We have the NIA and others. I think if they team up together with the other component of um, the police, the civil defense, and others that are in intelligence, they are not, their identity can hardly be, be known. Uh, these are people that could go and mix up with the community to be able to know what are the security challenges in each of these places. And, and you also know that um, these things are in the, in the public glare that. Um, People come out from forests either to attack and dispossess people of their uh, uh, valuable things or even take lives or kidnap for ransom to raise money for some other further criminal act, act, act. that, that uh, they established. All right, at this moment, I will pause you here. We'll continue with the conversation after they can, taking this uh, story. Mm. It is good news for the people of Katsuna State and Nigerians as all the 344 abducted students of government science secondary school Kankara have been released and handed over to the government of Katsuna State. Reports from Katsuna State indicate that the released students, though dirty, were in good shape. Salwa Khalil Ibrahim puts together this update. 
On the 11th of this month, more than 300 boys were abducted from their dormitory at Government Science Secondary School, Kankara, in Katsina State. Security agents immediately swung into action with the support of the state government and rescued the boys. Sequel to their rescue, the boys were handed over to the governor of Katsina State, Aminu Bello Masari, at the government house. We are here to formally hand over the 344 students of government school Qatar that were rescued from the bandits yesterday night. The students have been taken to Busau, where they were adequately taken care of. They slept through the night at Busau, and today, glory be to the Almighty God, we are here with them. Governor Masari commended security agencies and other stakeholders that worked tirelessly to achieve this feat. All the 344 boys are expected to undergo medical evaluation before uniting them with their families. In Abuja, Salwa Khalil Ibrahim, NTA News. Thank you, Salwa. Before we took that report uh, from Salwa, I have been speaking with uh, Joshak Habila. He's a retired Deputy Inspector General of Police. Here we are still in the studio discussing on the 344 abducted uh, boys of Science Secondary School, Kankara. And uh, now, sir, uh, before we went on that, before we took that report, you told us that um, um, the security operatives are making frantic effort to see that things get better in the country. Now, from what President just um, told us or told the students, what do you make out of his speech? Um, the speech is, is very important and, um, and it must be studied very well. And our action, action of the security and um, every other person that is involved it should be anchored in that. Number one, it was very, very reassuring um, for Mr. President to make himself available because of the nature of this. It was a right to, um, right thinking to me for him to have also uh, met with the victims and also made a statement. Two, um, the security agencies led by the uh, military who have long been in, um, in that kind of um, activities to go back again to look at those that will be injected right in there, and some of the um, some of the um, of, of, of tactics and, and methods used in, in, in trying to propagate um, this um, 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 action against some um, criminalities in in part of the country, um, it should be reactivated. And, and, and I, I think I think they should look at that and, and make a change to ensure that it's effective. Because members of the public are thinking that there's nothing being done uh, by the security agencies. They've scored the security agencies very low. But we have had success. Yeah, in this time. there are a lot of successes, but the people don't want to know because you have a success today. Tomorrow there is another story that is thrown at the face of uh, of of, the, of Nigerians, and Nigerians wouldn't want that. Nigerians want a situation where. These things will, will keep on building for positivism, and um, these criminals are brought to, bo to book. And you know that um, there are a lot of uh, mineral resources here at the northwest, western part of the country. So, uh, is it possible for you to tell us how these students were brought back home unharmed? Yes, I, I, I think that um, one, uh, the motive is not yet clear as to why they were picked. But I think they needed attention. Uh, they, they also wanted to exploit the, 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 the fact that uh, Mr. President was, was, was around there. And so they want to show that um, come what may, uh, it doesn't matter to them. Uh, they also want to think that, yes, uh, um, if um, Mr. President is, is, is in Katsina, it, it means that, um, it means that um, 
there would be a lot of security and they want to demonstrate that they could do that what they've done and they came in there and picked them. I think they wanted to say, send a statement that, that they can do whatever they wish to do uh, because uh, Shekau or somebody who claimed to be a Boko Haram um, leader said they had them. They did it and that the, the, the victims were with them. So you could see um, there are a lot of political um, undertones and um, never mind, I'm still having that hope, uh, uh, being part of it, also work with the military, operate with the military. I know that um, if they come back and listen to the, ch the chatting of Mr. President and the directive that has been ordered, they could do something different. All right, do you think there are challenges for um, in the, uh, on the side of the military now achieving this kind of success in the future. Are there obstacles? Do you envisage any obstacle limiting their effort? There is a lot of um, challenges from the military to the internal security agencies. All there, a lot of it. You know the. The, I, 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 I think we should be able to bring all and put on the table to make sure that some of the equipments required, even simple equipment required, and the welfare in terms of zeroing on every person that is there and knowing fully well that he has that capacity in yeah. terms of training. I can, I, I can let you know that a lot of them are well trained and then um, facilities like, uh, like the, the, the vehicles that are required the helicopters that are required, if, if, if they are available and if they are at the disposal of everyone, I can assure you that uh, they will ravage the, 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 the forest, whether it is the forest that span from Kaduna to Niger, from Niger uh, to Zamfara, from Zamfara to Katsina and Katsina to Bauchi, Bauchi and, and, and Kano. They, they will be able to, to go into that forest uh, and deal with them. All right, from the video, um, the abduct, uh, those that abducted these boys released uh, before they, they, they were being freed, you could hear one of the students uh, lamenting there that um, in Hausa language that the uh, government should stop all this helicopter moving up, up and down, this and that. Please, they should tell them they should stop that because that will further compound their problems, this and that. So now, there is capability. Is that so? There is. There is capability. We don't need to go and rent people out here to come and do this job. The military has the capacity, the other security agencies put together. If they can be synchronized, if they can be brought together, if they can w agree to work completely together mm -hmm. and then ask for requirements that are immediately available. For the helicopters, mm -hmm. you can go and buy helicopters in the market. You always have to let them know what you want, and it takes a lot of time to build them. And there's politics in what you ask for in the country you're asking for. There are other countries that are not friendly, and other countries would say, uh, why would you wage war in your country? Uh, can you declare a war against your country? And some will decline. Some decline because they do not have the interest of this country at heart. It's a very big country, and this country can also emit fear in some of the countries that you think they're bigger than this country. And it was sure a birthday for Mr. President. <laughs> and when the news filters that these boys were freed, you know, of course, it's jubilation all the way. Yes. Um, the, you, you remember, um, you saw um, the boys begging that um, the military should withdraw, the helicopter up should go. This is the, this is the, do, the dummy that has been um, sold to them. By, by the bandits, and, and it's true that the bandits were scared. In fact, that action must have prompted them into taking a decision to quickly release these boys. Were they harmed? They were not harmed, but of course there was something on top of their heads. The bandits saw the action, there, were, there was cordoning from what we learned, there was cordoning of the area that is rounding up the area with arm um, guard. There were also um, something flying up, and um, that is enough to send um, a message that, look, your time is up. If you don't release this, we're going to act. And you know, you could see that they, was, they, was, they were put together, and I'm sure they were all in their midst, so that if you drop, you would drop on them and the, uh, and the victims, the students. 
So now the president has, of course, re received these students a while ago. Uh, they've been presented officially to him. What do we do next? Yeah, I, I think the security agencies and the military should, should, should be very frank and should, should, should gather courage uh, to come to the table and tell government that there are a lot of gaps, there are a lot of um, 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 ungoverning space, and the threat is real, and that um, unless something very drastic, there are logistic challenges. There are quite a lot of challenges, but that the manpower to be used is, is there, it's huge. We, whether from the police or from the military, this could be brought together. The civil defense are also well trained, others are well trained. Let us cultivate what we call intelligence, those that will give information outside the security agencies and the military. Those who stay in these communities can be asked to, to, to give intelligence. Just few people in a community would, would tell you all that is happening. And we, we will be safe for it. There will be safe if, if, if they don't, if they don't uh, let people know who they are. Uh, you could use anyone. It has happened in other countries. Uh, we don't need to plant, we don't need to even bring uh, people from somewhere to put in a particular place because that man will also be a strange person. Okay. Yes. On this note, I would like to appreciate you for coming on Nationwide. Um, Joe Shark, um, Habila, thank you for your thoughts on Nationwide. Thank you for having me. Okay. Thank you. I've been speaking with Joshak Habila, a retired Deputy Inspector General of Police. We're going to take a break now. We'll return shortly. When you think about hospitality and affordable luxury away from home, then you talk about Sharon Ultimate Hotels, a secured and serene environment that offers kingly services such as 24-hour room service, impeccable security with CCTV surveillance, parking lots, free Wi-Fi internet service, free complimentary breakfast, restaurants that offers continental and local dishes, well-equipped fitness center with instructors, swimming pool, 350 capacity multi-purpose hall, laundry service, pastry corner, mini mat, and our suites are breathtaking. For reservation, locate us at plot 1710, Tafawa Balewa Way, Area 3, Garikia, Buja, the Charon Ultimate Hotels, the ultimate place. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day. NTA International is with you. In your living room, office, and everywhere, anywhere. We provide a company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs, and the best of entertainment. Tune in to DSTV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview Channel 264, or live streaming via www.visiontv.co.uk. Application for iOS or Android. Intelsat 901-332.5 degrees east. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world. Do you know that 35% of every girl, child, and women are raped on a daily basis? Some are killed in the process. Some take their lives in shame. Others remain emotionally dead for life. It is sad. This culture is not art, definitely not African. How did we allow bad culture to infiltrate and take over? Even if you lack fear for the law, what of fear of God? And you, why do you cover up rape acts when it happens? Remember, a problem share is a problem half solved. Never cover any rape act because a rapist is a murderer. It could be you or your loved ones next. Women must be treated like the prize gen they are. Say no to rape. crisis is growing and our tables will soon be empty if the world's population continues to increase and food production decreases. We're not producing enough 
for our population. I will do better if I can get source, financial source. Catch new episodes of Farm and Fortune every Friday at 6.30 p.m. on NTA Network. Find out on the Premier League Live as Southampton take on Manchester City from 3.30 p.m. on the NTA Network. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Axis Bank, Papai Jebu, Lipton Tea, and Close Up in association with Gold.com. Thank you for staying with us on Nationwide. Let's join Awal Yusuf Jibo in our Lagos Network Center for more stories from there. Hello, Awal. Thank you, Nolin. The passage of the Lagos State Lottery and Gaming Authority Bill into law by the Lagos State House of Assembly is to ensure proper regulation against underage gaming and operators in lottery and betting activities. This was re-echoed by government officials at an event to wrap up year 2020. Amaka O reports. Some people have negative impression about casinos, betting and other gaming activities. In order not to throw away the baby with the bath water, the Lagos state government put in place mechanisms to address underage participation, even as the benefits of such ventures were highlighted. Some of the money we use is to augment the negativity. We're building school, fire, fire station, fire trucks. That's what the, where the money is going back to. Some of the projects executed with the fund generated for lottery and gaming are Uniform for Labor State Neighborhood Court, Grant to Bestman Games Initiative to educate pupils across schools in Labor States on financial literacy. Chairman House Committee on Finance said the State House of Assembly has played its constitutional role in curbing adverse consequences of gaming addiction. The vulnerable, the ones that are less than 18 years, should not be exposed to online gaming and casino because it can uh, modify and structure their life. And more importantly, for those that are addicted, there are even uh, provisions in the law to rehabilitate them and bring them back to the society. So it's more of uh, all those that have been captured in the casino and gaming consolidated law of 2020. As the year 2020 winds down, the government says the expectation is for the sector to add more value to internally generated revenue in the coming years. In Lagos, Amaka O, NT News. From the information made available by the United Nations, Africa has a huge population of 226 million youths. Most of them have proven their mettle in all spheres of endeavor across the globe. But for those who are grappling with unemployment, a group known as the Connector Africa has unveiled a reality show in Lagos targeted at engaging such youths to unleash their creativity through entrepreneurship and self-reliance. Abolore Obara reports. The Connector Africa program is a reality television show designed to take African youths off the streets and connect them with their role models anywhere in the world for mentorship as well as economic empowerment. Founder, The Connector Africa, Udi Uzenwata said the idea is to make most dreams become a reality. Most of our youths, they want to be like somebody, but they always miss the track because they focus on what they shouldn't focus on. What you know, the person our youth needed to do is to go to the foundation, have an insight of the process the room or the pass through. The weekly reality show will feature more than 100 youths drawn from African countries to engage in a multitask that are related to their chosen role models. And based on each performance, the public will vote by selecting the winner. The winner each week will get 10 million naira. And at the end, the person that will win among the seven will be given a SUV and 30,000 US dollars. The eligible youths aged between 18 to 40 will be selected through a virtual interview to commence their participation in the program. The concept is unique. The 
idea is solid and all we have to do is to stay behind him and support him. It's a ranch-based reality show. Why they are in there, within a week every Sunday, there will be competition. The Connector Africa reality television show will be aired live daily on DSTV and GoTV platforms from March 29, 2021 for eight weeks. Any interested youth should log in to www.connectorafrica.com and stand a chance of winning in Lagos, Abolore Ogbara, NTA News. And for more nationwide, we go back to Nolene in Abuja. Thank you so much, Awal. We now take you to Ekiti State, where the Governor, Dr. Kayode Fayemi, has advocated varsity curriculum that would provide practical solutions to the economic challenges confronting the nation. This position, which was corroborated by human rights activist Femi Falano, also demanded for devolution of powers to states with equitable distribution of the nation's commonwealth to engender unity. Yemi Dalemo reports that Governor Kayode Fayumi also charged university graduates to contribute more meaningfully to nation's development. Ekiti State Governor Dr. Kayode Fayumi challenged the nation's ivory towers to rework on varsity's academic curricula to be tailored towards solving the hydra headed problems facing the country, urging stakeholders to contribute more to the ramping of the nation's standard of learning. This is a period where the academic curricula of our citadel of learning should be tailored towards meeting the realities of contemporary Nigeria and the antidotes to its various challenges. Our state government must take advantage of the provisions of the Constitution to demand their rights. You know, the country is only as good as the people. Nigeria has problems that are far more fundamental than the structure. The Catholic Bishop of Ekiti Dausi's Most Reverend Felix Ajakaye and other guests at the event called for democratization of powers devolved to state government from the center. In Adwekiti, Yemi Dalimo, NT News. And to security now, troops of Operation Fireball under Operation Lafia Dole have eliminated scores of Boko Haram terrorists and captured gun trucks, arms and ammunition. This followed attacks on a Super Camp 17 at Cross Kawa in Kukawa local government area and uh, Army Super Camp 11 in Gamborungala local government area of Borno State by Boko Haram terrorists. A press statement from the acting director, Defense Media Operations Brigadier General Bernard Onyeku says, in a swift reaction to the attacks, troops of 401 Special Forces Brigade eliminated nine Boko Haram terrorists and destroyed a gun truck, one anti-aircraft and captured three AK-47 rifles among other assorted ammunition. Office of the Surveyor General of the Federation, in collaboration with security agencies, is strategizing on sustainable survey coordination through the provision of requisite geo information for tactical and strategic operations. Hamman Jabani reports that the essence is to effectively tackle the contemporary security challenges in Nigeria. Interagency collaboration and coordination is believed to promote active working relationship among multiple agencies to improve outcome, act as catalysts for the design and implementation of strategies and policies that are timely, effective, relative, and sustainable, while pace, coherence, and effectiveness of operations are achieved. However, this will be achieved if surveying and mapping is taken seriously by relevant agencies for economic development and national security. It is important for us to really put together all our effort and energy to synergize and see how all these government agencies will be able to play their role for the advancement of this country, particularly in the area of security. And I want to assure you again, when that issues fall before us, we're going to make sure we do the needful. Without a database that gives us location information to amplify human intelligence, it will be very, very, very difficult for us to respond timely. And we look at the security situation in the country today, 
will require location intelligence. They are of the opinion, therefore, that the production and handling of such information cannot be left unsupervised, and this meeting is intended to provide solutions on how to implement the Survey Coordination Act of 1962 and subsequent amendments. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. And on education, the Admissions and Matriculation Board JAMP has awarded 375 million naira to four tertiary institutions for their outstanding adherence to international best practices in their admissions processes in 2019 National Tertiary Admissions Performance Merit Award, tagged 2019 NATAP. M award. Olainka Ojo reports that each of the institutions received the sum of 75 million naira at the second edition of the awards. NATAP Merit Award seeks to promote excellence among tertiary institutions in Nigeria, as well as support institutions to ensure that Nigerians desirous of tertiary education get quality education through five categories. The most subscribed institutions by candidates, the most national institution in terms of admission spread, the institution with the highest number of admission of international students, the most improved institution in intake of female students and the most compliant institution in keeping with the guidelines, rules and regulation of admissions. That is completion of admission within the stipulated time, process its admission whether full time or part time on caps. And as the nation's tertiary education system continues to be in the front burner at national and international discourse, Minister of Education Adamo Adamu said a lot is expected from tertiary institutions, particularly at this critical period of nation building. The government is conscious of all the expectations people have and everything is being done to satisfy the earnings of Nigerians for, for the nation's tertiary institutions to continue to play the role we expect them to play. The moment for the announcement of the 2019 winners of the award saw the likes of University of Ilorin, Amadou Bello University Zaria, Federal University Wukari, and Ogun State Institute of Technology clinching the star prize in the different categories. But this money will make creating pathway between buildings on campus uh, something that will be useful to all of us. The award was instituted by the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAMP, in 2018. Online Kaujo, NTA News. And elsewhere, matching words with action is desirable in any endeavor to underscore the importance attached to such venture. This plays out when the Tertiary Education Trust Fund summoned all 12 centers of excellence it inaugurated recently to a capacity building on sustainable and to ensure they are on track towards making Nigeria a knowledge-based economy. Abdullahi Musa Suleja reports. Some weeks ago, Tetefant presented letters to 12 universities to each in geopolitical zones to establish first ever centers of excellence to strengthen the nation's economy and development. It is a transformation drive to resuscitate the tertiary institutions to live up to its roles as obtained in other developed societies. To guide them aright, the centers were invited to listen and interact with resource persons on how to meet the desired goals. I promise that we at the fund would be standing shoulder to shoulder with you to offer every support, guidance and collaboration that will be needed in order for you to succeed in this challenging endeavor. This workshop today is the beginning of the fulfillment of that promise. We have invited some of the best and most eminently qualified academics, researchers and directors and administrators of the World Bank sponsored African Centers of Excellence to deliver this workshop. Centers of Excellence define research innovation priorities of any country for local, regional and national needs. Abdullah Musa Suleja, NTA News. Next is sports with Bade Adele.